research and discovery. Futurists. From the pine trees in southern Europe to the spruce forests near the Arctic Circle, about 25 million cubic meters of wood are wasted every year in Europe. Ten percent of the wood is produced in vain. I mean, it's not going to the product that it was supposed to be. It is about the same size as a tenth of of Luxembourg, so it's a very big area that is harvested in vain every year. You don't really know what kind of wood is arriving at the sawmill, and this has an effect that it generates a lot of downgrading and you have to produce wood chips from, from logs that might have been suited for another product. Before there was no possibility to control this flu. Now we at least have the means to do it. If we have this traceability now available, then it would be possible to know, even in the forest, how to produce something from this particular log and send it to the right destina destination right away. This is northern Sweden, not far from the Arctic Circle. This machine fells and transforms pine, spruce and birch trees into 120 logs per hour. The operator is testing a new way of identifying pine logs. He comes down with measuring instruments, a special axe, and a tag. Inside each tag is a radio frequency identification transponder. Each tag I put on the log has a number. Then I measure the log by hand. Measurements are transferred by Wi-Fi to the computer in the harvesting machine, so each tree is identified. The data is then sent to our main office, and from there, the sawmill. Testing is supervised by technology and environmental researchers from a European research project to ensure the traceability of wood using the latest technology. Today's test was manual, but in the future, the harvesting machine will fell the trees, measure the logs and insert the RFID tags automatically in less than a second. In that time you both applicate it and you read the transponder code and you load the transponder code directly to the computer in the forest machine so you tie the information in the transponder to the information about the log. <clears throat> for example, the log length, the diameters, where you cut the log, the time for it, who was driving the operator, everything like that. Tagged logs are sent to the sawmill. Finnish researchers have developed the data processing system. Tagged logs are read here. The tested transponder is made of biodegradable natural fiber. It's a small technological jewel. Wood that is not sawn into boards is chipped and used in the pulping mills and as raw material for paper making. And no plastics are allowed in that raw material. And plastics are the most common materials for transponders, and we had to find a material that is acceptable for the paper mills. Traceability means the sawmill can adapt wood input according to requirements. It saves time, it's more efficient, wood is best used, and forests are preserved. Knowing the length, average length of, of the logs coming from, from this area is important for the people at, at the sawmill because they can make better decisions where to buy the logs. 4,000 kilometers further south, this is central France. RFID tags prove useful for better management of wood stocks. This giant sawmill processes and stocks around 120 tons of oak per day. All measuring here is still manual. RFID identification would improve wood management here and in other large wood plants across Europe where final products are still simply labelled with a barcode. Here we have a stock of about 30 acres. There are around 30,000 references in this stock and around 22,000 stock movements each year. The RFID tags will automate the management of this stock. Using these tags, we'll be able to identify automatically, with no extra effort, the number of each stack, its location and the quality. But RFIDs are not always the answer. 
used in some wood, they can become fragile and expensive, so researchers are looking for more answers. Back in Sweden, scientists at this institute are testing data transmission in wood using special ink. This saw prototype is able to print an ink code while cutting the tree. Technical challenges are huge. Uh, you have a very tough environment which this equipment should work. You have uh, small nozzle holes, small ink tubes, and the valves are uh, small. This is a beltway carrier similar to those used in sawmills. Special lights help the camera see the code. Computer vision and imaging processing should allow data decoding in all weather conditions. We have to survive minus 40 and plus 40 maybe, so uh, it, it's a very tough environment. Tough environments are daily business at this factory in southern France. A million and a half maritime pine logs are peeled every year to produce plywood. Ink codes are being tested here. Logs are measured and weighted. Then coded data is imprinted onto them. Logs are steamed for about 16 hours at approximately 80 degrees centigrade. Ink codes survive the treatment. Once steamed, logs are again identified, peeled and transformed into plywood planks. But wood expert Robert Golia dreams of a bolder traceability formula. Nanoparticles plus invisible ink plus laser. Distributed with invisible ink, nanoparticles form codes that are only visible at a specific wavelengths. Powerful lasers can read the codes even through dirt, snow or ice. On a fait des tests ici. We tested RFID tags here. Environmentally, they were fine. They even survived the steamers for 16, 20 hours at 80 degrees centigrade. But they weren't economic. The technology was costing more than the value of the wood. So we're going to look at nanoparticles. They can be read by a 30-watt laser, so that's quite powerful. The laser will measure the spectrum response of the nanoparticles in a specific wavelength. Observer la réponse spectrale de ces particules dans une longueur d'onde préférentielle. Traceability will not only help exploit European forests more efficiently, consumers should also profit. For example, in this factory, around 300 kitchen massive oak worktops are produced every day. The better the traceability, the fairer the prices. What does traceability mean when making work surfaces like this one? Well, it means supplying the most appropriate piece of wood of the quality expected by the consumer. Not using higher than needed quality will obviously impact on the price of the work surface. Today, the consumer, they don't only pay for the product, they also pay for this extra wood that is harvested and thrown. So it's a very high price for maybe not so good product. So they will definitely gain very much.